Welcome everybody to this invited presentation on bioresorbable and biodegradable electronics and photonics. My name is Giuseppe Barillaro and uh, I'm uh, a professor of electronics at the University of Pisa. First of all, let me thank the organizer of this special session for extending this kind invitation. Bioresorbable and biodegradable devices are devices made out of materials that spontaneously dissolve in water with safe byproducts for human and for the environment. The ultimate goal is the fabrication of a family of uh, electronic, photonic, and uh, sensing components that can be engineering to fabricate uh, bioresorbable systems, which are environment friendly, waste free and biological benign. Over the last decade, a major effort has been paid to the development of implantable bioresorbable devices for medical applications. However, if you think about traditional medical devices designed to be implanted in the human body to treat chronic disease, those are made out of inert biocompatible materials and optimized to warrant their functionality over the years, possibly over the whole patient's life. This is, for example, the case of the devices shown in this chart, particularly a uh, cardiac pacemaker on the left-hand side, coronary stent in the middle, and uh, cochlear implant uh, in the right-hand side. On the other hand, there are many other cases of clinical interest where the implanted devices are required to work operate only for a well-defined amount of time. This is the case, for example, of muscle stimulation, wound healing, bone growth stimulation, neurostimulation. In this and other cases, surgical retrieval of the device is eventually required, which could be potentially dangerous for the patient's health. This is where bioresorbable devices can make a difference with respect to traditional implantable devices. In fact, once implanted in the body, the bioresorbable device will monitor clinical parameters and provide therapeutic action as traditional ones. However, the main difference is that after a design operation time, it will be spontaneously dissolved into safe byproducts thus eliminating the need for surgery retrieval. This chart summarizes the milestone achieved over the last decade on this field. From the first demonstration of bioresorbable electronic components given in 2009-2012, a number of other important milestones have been achieved over the next years, including harvester and batteries, uh, physical and chemical sensors, optical waveguides, and components. In 2019, a first attempt to integrate, to combine components belonging to different domains into a complex bioresorbable system has been also reported. And I would say this will be the dominant trend in the next future. In spite of the relevant number of devices with different functionalities that have been reported, the general approach in the fabrication of bioresorbable devices is based on the encapsulation of the device itself with an outer protected material. In fact, all the materials used for the device fabrication are supposedly bioresorbable, though with different rates. Therefore, the use of, encapsula of the encapsulation materials is mainly to define the operation life of the device by preventing direct contact with biofluid. For instance, oxide and nitride, and as well as polymer, are commonly used as encapsulation layers due to their low and tunable dissolution rates in the range of 0.01 to 1 nanometer per day in physiological conditions. Let's see now a few examples of bioresorbable components and systems. 
transistor and passive electrical components such as resistors, inductors, antennas, diodes and capacitors based on bioresorbable materials had been successfully fabricated and assessed in vivo. The first report on fully bioresorbable silicon transistor and electronic circuits was given in 2012. The transistors were fabricated on silicon nanomembranes and transfer printed on a PLGA substrate. The authors demonstrated for the first time that nanometer thick silicon membrane can dissolve in the body with safe byproducts. Remarkably, bioresorbable silicon transistors have shown performance comparable to that of standard silicon devices, and biocompatibility and degradation of these devices has been clearly assessed both in vitro and in vivo in an animal model. Besides transistors, several approaches have been used for the fabrication of passive components. Among these, in 2015, Lee and Koto reported on the fabrication of bioresorbable radio frequency addressable coils for drug release. The coils were made out of molybdenum deposited on a PLGA substrate and were coated with a thermally responsive lipid layer. This latter was used to encapsulate an hydrophobic drug, namely the antitumoral doxorubicin. Once implanted in an animal model, powering on the coils for a certain time allowed to control the increase of the local temperature, inducing the desensibilization of the lipid layer, triggering in turn the controlled release of drug. Pressure and temperature sensors represent the most advanced bioreservable physical sensors to date. The former are based on variable capacitor, piezoelectric crystals, or strong gauges, while the latter make use uh, or thermoresponsive materials. Usually, this sensor exploits free stranding silicon nanomembrane or dielectrics that deform with pressure and strain, thus producing changes in of capacitance and resistance values. We are referred to similar devices integrated on back silicon. In 2019, Butri et Quotos reported on a capacitive pressure sensor implanted in rat around the femoral artery. Heart rate was monitored on demand exploded a radio frequency coupling to measure the frequency shift of the LCF resonance circuits. Although very appealing, bioresorbable chemical sensor has been limited so far to the detection of ions of small organic molecules. The challenge here is that the sensing materials must be in contact with the fluid of interest containing the target analytes. So they cannot be protected with an encapsulating materials as it happens for other bioresorbable devices. In 2015, Wang et Quotos reported a bioresorbable pH sensor using fat like structures based on oxidized silicon nanoribbons transfer print on a flexible substrate. The surface of the nanoribbons was functionalized with the acylane molecule, which was then used as a pH sensitive probe. Talking about power sources, there is nowadays an increasing interest in the, toward ingestible and degradable batteries. Bioresorbable power sources such as batteries and energy harvesters are indeed a critical component of any implanted system, regardless of application targeted. In 2014, Ian and Kotos reported on a bioresorbable battery consisting of four cells of magnesium molybdenum stacked together and encapsulated in a polar dry layer filled with PBS. A stable output voltage of 1.6 volt was achieved up to six hours of operation. On the other hand, energy harvesters such as piezoelectric, triboelectric, and photovoltaic generators represent an intriguing alternative to batteries as they enable the direct production of energy once implanted in the body. 
Recently, Zhang et co-authors reported on a SIF-based tribal electric generator in which the degradation state can be optically monitored. Magnesium and silk, which were part in, was part on the micro scale, were used as tribal electric materials. When implanted in an animal model, the generator showed a stable of output voltage of 6 volt for 6 hours when a, an external force was periodically applied to the implant site on the skin. Injection on 10 ml of a saline solution was used to trigger degradation. Very recently, bioresorbable optical waveguides, photonic structure and optical sensor working in the visible near infrared region and able to operate in vivo in physiological conditions have also been reported. In 2019, uh, Bioquotos fabricated flexible uh, infrared waveguides using thin silicon wires achieved from SOI wafer. The wires were then transfer printed and coated with a PLG layer. The silicon PLG waveguide were used in vivo to measure blood oxygen saturation by injecting light in the waveguide at one end and measuring light transmitted through the wavegun at the other end. The wavelength user were corresponded to oxygen absorption. Very recently, Due Quarter demonstrated a fully bioresorbable LED based on zinc oxide semiconductor using ultra thin transparent electrode of molybdenum. The LED emitted light starting at about 5 volt with a rather broad emission spectrum ranging from 420 to 615 nanometer. Although the threshold voltage was comparable to that of standard zinc oxide LED, the intensity of the emitted light was significantly lower. In this case, no in vivo tests has been reported for the proposed LED. Eventually, a few reports on the integration of bioresorbable components into a complex system have been also reported. In 2019, Bayek authors reported on a bioresorbable optoelectronic system consisting of an optical fiber used to deliver light, a photodetector for generating electrical signals in response to transmitted light, and electro for electrical connection of the photodetector to an external measurement setup. The system was implanted in a rat brain, showing the possibility to continuously monitor cerebral temperature, oxygen saturation, and neural activity in living animals. Implantation induced the minimal inflammatory response, which was gradually reduced to a level comparable to the control group. Let's now conclude this talk summarizing the main achievements and open challenges of the bioresorbable technology. The analysis of the state-of-the-art literature on this subject points out that, although still in its infancy, a number of important discoveries and applications have been made since the first report on bioresorbable transistors given in 2009. In spite of this achievement, there is plenty of room for further research on this field, for instance, complex electronic circuits able to promote in situ and in vivo signal amplification and filtering, such as, for example, operation amplifiers, have not been demonstrated yet. Also, new approaches are required to extend operation and improve performance of chemical sensor and power sources. As far as optical components is concerned, this has been uh, overlooked with respect to the electrical counterpart, and research on this subject must be accelerated over the next years. Eventually, lifetime of all the bioresorbable devices reported so far depends on the spontaneous dissolution rate of the encapsulating materials. While a non-demand dissolution would be preferred for clinical applications. If we will look at the technology readiness level, uh, TRL, of the bioresorbable components and system achieved to date, it ranges from 2 to 4, as shown in the radar plot reported in this chart. This means that 
Components and systems has been validated in laboratory and environment, but the technology is not re ready for the market yet. It is my opinion that two real world application on human may require additional five to ten years of research. The potential of the bioresolvable technology is enormous, and research effort on this subject will increase in the next few years. Thank you very much for attending this talk and please email me for any question or comment you may have. Thank you.